Our lesson for today is about factoring polynomials with special cases. Difference of two squares. So if the given polynomial is like a squared minus b squared, the factors must be a plus b times a minus b. So how will we know if the given polynomial is a difference of two squares? These are the things that we have to check. First one, the operation must be subtraction. So, dapat minus sign yung nasa gitna nila. Second one, each term must be a perfect square. So, bawat term sa given polynomial must be a perfect square. So, to understand it clearly, let's have more examples. Number one, 4x squared minus 81. So, let's check. Is the operation really a subtraction? Yes, so as you can see, minus sign po yung nasa gitna nila. So it means we satisfy the first requirement. The second one, each term must be a perfect square. So ano-ano ba yung terms natin? We have 4x squared and 81. Is 4x squared a perfect square? Yes, so when we say perfect square, the factors of the given term must be the same. So as you can see here, 2x is the same with 2x. So it means 4x squared is a perfect square. How about 81? So the second term, is 81 a perfect square? Yes, so 81 is from 9 times 9. It means that we satisfy the second requirement. Now, since this polynomial is really a difference of two squares, we may now apply the pattern given. First, we have to get the square root of each term. So what is the square root of 4x squared? Yes, 2x. What is the square root of 81? 9. So we will be using these answers to get the factors of the given polynomial. So 2x will be the first term, while 9 will be the second term. It will be written like this. So 2x, first terms. And then 9, second terms. And we will be using plus and minus sign. So our answer is 2x plus 9 times 2x minus 9. Another example, number 2. 16p raised to 4 minus 25. Let's check. Is the operation really a subtraction? Yes. So as you can see, minus sign then ang naanjaan. Next, each term must be a perfect square. So, ano ba yung mga terms natin? 16p raised to 4. Is this a perfect square? Yes. So, 16p raised to 4 is equal to 4p squared times 4p squared. How about the second term? Is 25 a perfect square? Yes. So, 25 is from 5 times 5. It means that we satisfy the second requirement. Now, Let's get the factor. So we have to get the square root of each term. Square root of 16, p raised to 4. Square root of 16 is equal to 4. And then square root of p raised to 4, you just have to divide the exponent by 2 to get the square root of a variable. So p raised to 4 divided by 2, you will get p raised to 2 or p squared. So the answer will be 4p squared. Square root of 16 is 4. The square root of p raised to 4 is p squared. And then the second term, square root of 25. So it will be 5. Let's use these two terms for our answer. 4p squared will be the first term, while 5 will be the second term. So it will be written like this. 4p squared plus 5 and then 4p squared minus 5. So plus and minus First terms are from p squared. Second terms are from pi. So this is our answer. Another example. 100a squared minus 36b raised to 6. Is the operation a subtraction? Yes. So the given polynomial has minus sign. Each term must be a perfect square. Is 100a squared a perfect square? Yes, so 100a squared is from 10a times 10a. How about the second term? 
Is 36B raised to 6 a perfect square? Yes. So 36B raised to 6 is from 6B cubed times 6B cubed. It means that we satisfy the second requirement. Now, let's get the factors. First, we have to get the square root of each term. So what is the square root of 100A squared? It is 10A. Square root of 100 is 10. Square root of A squared is A. How about the square root of 36B raised to 6? So it is 6B cubed. Square root of 36 is 6. But square root of B raised to 6, we just have to divide 6 by 2, which will give you 3. Kaya siya naging B cubed. Now, let's use these answers for our factors. So it will be 10A plus 6B cubed times 10A minus 6B cubed. So this will be our final answer. Another one, we have 64x squared minus 13y. Let's check, is the operation a subtraction? Yes, so we satisfy the first one. Next, each term must be a perfect square. Is 64x squared a perfect square? Yes, so 64x squared is from 8x times 8x. Second term, 13y. Is 13y a perfect square? No. So, 13y is not a perfect square. Kasi 13 is a prime number. So, therefore, B did not satisfy the second requirement. It means that the given polynomial is not a difference of two squares. So, it means we cannot apply the given pattern. Perfect square trinomial. If the given polynomial is like a squared plus 2ab plus b squared is a perfect square, your factor will just be a plus b squared. So how will we know if the given polynomial is a perfect square? These are the things that we have to check. The first one, first term or the a squared and the last term which is the b squared must be perfect squares. The next one, the middle term must be twice the product of the square root of the first term which is a squared and the last term, which is b squared. So we have to get the square root of the 2, multiply it, and then get the twice of it. It must be the same with the middle term. So to understand it clearly, let's have examples. 4x squared plus 36x plus 81. So let's check. If the first term, which is 4x squared, and the last term, which is 81, are perfect square. Is 4x squared and 81 perfect squares? Yes, so 4x squared is a perfect square as well as 81. When you get the square root of 4x squared, you'll get 2x, while the square root of 81 is 9. So it means we satisfy the first requirement. The second one. The middle term is twice the product of the square root of the first term, which is 4x squared, and the last term, which is 81. So we have to get the square root of the first and the last term. So ang square root ng 4x squared, as you can see here, is 2x, and the square root of 81 is 9. So we will be multiplying the 2, and it will give us 18x, and after that, get the twice of the product. So it means we will be multiplying 18x by 2 and we will be getting 36x. Is 36x the same with the middle term of the given polynomial? Yes, so it means we satisfy the second requirement. So therefore, the given polynomial is a perfect square. Now, let's get the factor. Let's just follow the given pattern. We just have to get the square root of the first and last term and then square the binomial. So as you can see here, the square root of the first term is 2x and the square root of the last term is 9. So we will be using 2x and 9 for our answer. We will be getting the operation, the plus or minus sign, from the middle term. So ano lang ba ang pagkakaiba nitong dalawa? Pagkakaiba lang nila ay yung sa sign. Kasi ang sign na itong unang given trinomial ay positive. Therefore, yung answer niya ay positive din. 
Dito naman sa pangalawa, since negative yung second term niya, kaya yung answer ay negative din. So, it means kinukuha lang nila yung sign doon sa middle term. So, what is the sign of our middle term? Positive. It means we will be using positive for our factor. So, it will be 2x and then plus 9. After that, we will square that binomial. So, anong mangyayari? The result will be 2x plus 9 squared. So, this will be our answer. Let's have another example. 9x raised to 4 minus 24x squared y plus 16y squared. Let's check if the first and last term are perfect square. Is 9x raised to 4 and 16y squared a perfect square? Yes. So, square root of 9x raised to 4 is equal to 3x squared, while square root of 16y squared is equal to 4y. So, we satisfy the first requirement. And then, the second one, the middle term is twice the product of the square root of the first and last term. So, multiply lang natin itong dalawang square root. So, 3x squared times 4y, it will give us 12x squared y. After that, we will be getting twice the product. So, we will be multiplying 12x squared y by 2. And it will give you 24x squared y. Is this the same with the middle term? Yes. So, therefore, we satisfy the second requirement. It means that the given polynomial is really a perfect square trinomial. Now, let's get the answer. So, to get the answer, we just have to get the square root of the first and last term, which are 3x squared and 4y. And then, get the operation from the middle term. So, ano ba ang sign ng middle term? So, negative. It means that we will be using negative for our answer. So, it will be 3x squared minus 4y, and then let's square it. So, your final answer will be 3x squared minus 4y squared. Next, another example. a squared plus 6ab squared plus 9b raised to 4. Let's check if the first and last term are perfect square. So, a squared and 9b raised to 4, are they perfect square? Yes, they are perfect squares. Square root of a squared is a. Square root of 9b raised to 4 is 3b squared. Means, we satisfy the first requirement. Second, the middle term is twice the product of the square root of first and last term. So, let's multiply a and 3b squared. It will give you 3ab squared. After that, let's get twice of it. So, it will be 3ab squared times 2. It will give you 6ab squared. Is this the same with the middle term of our given polynomial? Yes. So, it means we satisfy the second requirement. Now, let's get the factor of this polynomial. So, we will just be using the square root of the first term, which is a, and the square root of the last term, which is 3b squared, and get the sign from the middle term, which is positive. So, kaya naging a plus 3b squared. And then, square the binomial. So, it will be a plus 3b squared squared. So, that will be our final answer.